Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Anch welcome back, everyone, to the Ankylosing Spondylitis Reduce Your Pain podcast. I am your host, Sky Denton, and it is awesome having you here today. This is our fifteenth episode, and I want to thank everyone who has supported the mission of this show, supported me personally, given me insights, feedback, questions that they wanted answered and all of the support I've gotten all over the world for doing this show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have, once again, Peter Winslow on the show today, and we talk about the importance of follow through when it comes to reclaiming our life from disease, when it comes to understanding and implementing the mind-body connection to achieve fantastic pain reduction results and to move forward. And I'll give you a metaphor. If a baseball player is stepping up to bat and his goal is to hit a home run, as he swings the baseball bat at the ball and makes contact with the ball, he's already focused, at least partially, beyond just the point of impact from the ball and the bat, he's also focused on hitting that ball out of the park. He's not 100% focused on just the point of contact with the baseball bat and the ball. He's got a follow through in mind. He's got a, a trajectory that he wants to put that ball into. And he's got a place in the grandstand that he's aiming for. And a lot of us, when we're struggling with chronic pain, and with a constant to-do list of daily tasks and chores and medications to take and appointments to get to, sometimes we lose focus on the bigger perspective, the trajectory that we want to hit that baseball in order to hit that home run, knock it out of the park and into the grandstand. People in chronic pain can have it especially hard. And that's why I really want all of you to understand this. And I want you to think about it like this. If you're focused every day on just where that baseball bat meets the ball, which is like where the rubber meets the road with dealing with AS on a day-to-day -day basis, and you don't have a bigger focal point on where you'd like to be and where you'd actually like to be going, then I encourage you now to think about it. What this looked like in my life is that although I was diagnosed with a very scary and severe case of ankylosing spondylitis, I also knew that I didn't have to accept the prognosis. I would receive the diagnosis by multiple doctors. And inside, I was like, okay, but that's not the trajectory I want to go in life. So I'm going to do everything in my power to move in that bigger trajectory of getting back to wellness instead of just coping with chronic pain. And one of the main messages I want all of you to get from this show is that it's possible to feel good again. We do not just have to cope with chronic pain forever. We can hit our baseball into the grandstand with follow through and intention and good guidance and support and hit the home run of reducing our pain and getting to a place that I call AS freedom, which is where we are back in control of our life. We're not just dealing with pain every day, but we're actually healing and have healed from it to where our life looks very different, where we are living life of AS freedom, which is fun, it is joyous, and it is one that is certainly worth, <laughs> worth creating in your life. We also talk about mirror neurons and their importance in not only healing, but just at their role in our life. You see, we have brilliant brains and part of the design of them is that we naturally begin to mirror people that are close to us, the people that we spend the most time with. This is not new information. 
in many areas. It's not new in business school. It's not new in success school. It, it's common knowledge that we take on the habits and behaviors of the people that we're around the most. And so as a coach, I encourage you to spend time around people that are not just fighting life and fighting pain and fighting disease all the time, because that is what you will naturally take on. I want you to have another opportunity for your brain to start capitalizing on its natural programming to use these mirror neurons to your advantage by taking in perspective, tools, and wisdom around health and healing and viewing AS in the way that Peter taught me, which allowed me to do what I did and is allowing other people down the line to do the same thing. So you'll understand a little bit more about mirror neurons by the time you're finished with this. And I am excited for you to think closely about how can you use that part of your brain to your advantage to reduce your pain and move forward into a life of AS freedom. With that, and without further ado, here's the conversation between me and Peter Winslow. Hey, Peter, it's great to be with you. Hello, Sky. Hey, good to see you again, my friend. Yeah, it is. I have had so much fun with these podcasts, and I uh, am excited for today's show. So how are you feeling? Always feeling good. That's my job, you know. I've got to feel good and spread the word. <laughs> Perfect. And I love that you just said that, because that brings us directly into the topic of today's show. And it's a topic that is on everyone's mind all over the world that's been diagnosed with AS. And it's how to start feeling good again. And trust me, both you and I know that people with AS, like they know how to feel bad. You and I, we both know how to feel bad. We did it for years. Oh yeah. And, and we've gotten to a place where we can feel good again. And so question for you, how does someone start feeling good again that has AS? And specifically in the lessons that you've taught me, you told me to start living like a healthy person, Sky. Start living like a healthy person. And so my question for you to kick off today's show is, what does that look like for someone who's been in pain for a while and maybe they've even forgotten how to live healthy, how to feel good? How do they start doing this? Yeah, so that's a great question. And it really goes to the point of, of which we want to get across to people is that they really can feel good again. So certain things must be understood. First of all, what you focus on expands. So if you're focused on what you're trying to get rid of or what you don't like or what causes you pain or suffering, then you're going to expect to see and feel more of that because that's what you're focused on. So there are a lot of people, myself included, who have conditions of chronic pain. I don't have it anymore, but I did have AS and chronic pain. And I just strong-armed it. I just moved through it, you know, year after year in ways that were subtle and sometimes not so subtle, dealing with the pain and then just acting like I was healthy anyway. So when I started working out, I started acting like a healthy person acts. And that was the beginning of the end of my chronic condition. But philosophically, what people want to understand is that their job in life, everybody's inner purpose in life is to feel good. That's what everybody wants. That's what everybody's attempting to get to, you know? Oh, sure, they've all got different ideas about how they get there and what's going to occur to help them feel good. You know, some people would say, I'll feel good when I put $10 million in the bank. And other people would say, I feel good when uh, my kids will finally do what I've asked them to do or, you know, when my... Uh, medical record is clear. So they've all got different ideas about how they're going to get there, but everybody's attempting to feel good. So I ask, what if you could just feel good anyway? How much easier would your life be? And so I started studying along those lines and I found a, uh, an impetus by, uh, written by Aristotle called the law of identity. And the law of identity is per Aristotle goes into some deep reflections, but a modern philosopher took that uh, lesson and put it like this. He said, in life, we don't get what we want. We get what we are. Now, when we unpack that and learn and, and emulate that teaching, 
our lives change exponentially and rapidly in a better, in a way for the better, in a better way. So this all points to the import that your job is to feel good. Your life purpose, your inner purpose in life is to feel good. So again, I ask, what if you could just feel good anyway? How would that make your life here? The pain or the medical condition or the uh, financial situation or the family situation or whatever, if you could just feel good about who you are, wouldn't that change things and make things easier in life? And the answer is absolutely 100% yes, unequivocally so. So that's one of the first things I teach people is how to feel good. And when you start to feel good, you start to act like a healthy person acts and the body follows the mind into remission and recovery when it comes to chronic conditions such as AS and other autoimmune disorders. So that's the most important point for people to understand is that their inner purpose, their job in life is to feel good. And you can choose to feel good and back that up with your behaviors and actions and speech in a way that makes changes in your life for the better. And that's where I began to recover from my chronic conditions of ankylosing spondylitis, depression, addiction, and all the other things that went along with that. Does that that's help? Right. It does, yeah. And it's something that is uncommon, I think, in today's culture. I think you would probably agree. Both you and I know how powerful that this mindset is just by looking at our current health. And so I'm thinking back to the people that have spent like, we'll say five years fighting AS, not knowing that there's another way to go about dealing with disease in their life. I know that it can be very hard not to fight the pain and feel that we need to, to will ourselves through the pain every day, just to live a basic life, just to do our basic grocery shopping. And so I guess I'm excited for a lot of people to hear your message with this because it can give them another way to go about living. It can give them another way to deal with the issue at hand, which is how on earth do I go from dealing with this chronic pain and a scary diagnosis to living like what I like to call a life of AS freedom, where we are back in control of our life. We are doing what we want to do. We don't have to be structuring our life around disease anymore. We're structuring life around feeling good and doing what we want to do. And acting like healthy people act. And that's the first stage to programming the mind for success in this endeavor. And then the body follows the mind, as always. Mm-hmm. So I began today's call with the question that was, what do people do to start feeling good again? And you sent me your Winslow's Habits That Heal lesson number 20, which is perfect. It's absolutely on point for today's call. So here it is. I'm gonna introduce it to the audience. Winslow's Habits That Heal lesson number 20, act like a healthy person. Never lower your intention to be healthy simply because you've been told you cannot have it or you can't figure out how it could possibly happen. Stop looking at what you do not want or what you want to get rid of. Your job is to maintain focus on the state of health you intend to feel and surround yourself with people who already have it. Simply decide to be happy and healthy. Then from this moment on, think like it, speak like it and act like it be the state and allow no thought or feeling ever to negate it. The secret of a happy life is this, stop trying to get it and just be it. I love it. I absolutely love that. And it seems that nobody else is teaching this awareness in the world. I know that there are people who, who are, but they're very few and far between. What most people are being taught to do is fight, fight, fight. Fight what they don't want, focus on what they've got that's wrong with them try to sustain themselves through each day by wrestling with their pain and anxiety and so forth. And that's what makes the world go round apparently in today's world. Mm -hmm. There's a better way guys. There's absolutely a better way to do this. And that's what I encapsulate in that habits that heal number 20. Just act like a healthy person acts. Now I can hear the people saying, yeah, well, how do you do that when you're in constant chronic pain? 
Well, you've got to learn how to do that, don't you? So that's what we teach in our coaching programs is what to do with that. But I'll tell you that today, it's a personal choice. And so it begins with a new philosophy. Stop focusing on what you don't want and focus on what it is you'd like to experience, which is a part of that uh, habit that heals right there. Mm -hmm. Where I say, stop looking at what you don't want or what you want to get rid of. That's what everybody's focused on. They want to get rid of the AS. So they think they're focused on being healthy, but they're focused on what they lack. As we've mm -hmm. talked about before in this podcast. Instead, yeah. the job is to maintain focus on the state of health that they intend to feel, that they'd like to have. And then surround yourself with the people who already have got it. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. And that's how we begin the process mentally and emotionally that then lends itself and adds up to changes in the body. Mm -hmm. So good attitude, right? I mean, there are people who feel happy and happy people look for happy thoughts. Happy people look for happy events. Mm -hmm. They focus on being happy and as a result, they are happy. So it's the same thing with this, healthy. Focus on what it is you'd like to experience instead of what you're trying to get rid of. Act like a healthy person, speak like it, think like it, and let no thought or obverse principle ever get in the way of your beautiful image of health and happiness. That's where you begin. A visual image is someone swinging a baseball bat. And a lot of, I think, people would think that the focus might be on like the point of impact with the baseball and the bat, which is obviously absolutely important. But I would say that good batters that are hitting home runs consistently, their focus is partly there, like on how to manage the impact, get the swing, the timing right. But they've got to focus out in the grandstand. They're like, that's where a home run happens. So they've got, they've got a follow through already in mind. That's their, the key. Their focus doesn't stop on just where the baseball and the bat connect. Their focus is on hitting the top bleachers in that grandstand and literally knocking it out of the park. It's that, that follow through and getting our, our conscious state focused on something beyond just the fighting of disease in the body. I like that analogy. It's pretty useful, Sky. Uh, the swing, the batter who's swinging the bat, the swing doesn't end at the contact with the ball. You've mm -hmm. got to follow all the way through to get the results that you're looking to get. So mm -hmm. that follow through is what's critically important. Sure, you've got to make contact. You've got to make that initial uh, contact with the ball in order to send it out to the outfield. But it doesn't stop there, does it? And this is a metaphor for what we're doing in our lives and how we're imagining ourselves a self-image of being healthy or not and following through on that contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good metaphor. I think about golfing too. You, you, know, you know where you're going. You've got a flag. There's a flag 300 yards away. You need to know the direction that you're headed. And then you move the ball in that direction. You don't just stand up there and just start whacking 90 degrees off <laughs> off the course so I think that a big part of what you taught me was get my focus on the follow-through get my focus on the grandstand to smack that home run that was required yeah when I was a kid I took boxing lessons for a while too and my boxing coach told me see your hand going through that nose and a foot behind their head so that's like follow through Mm -hmm. Even though that's violent and my uh, yoga masters might not care for that example, <laughs> hold sway, Sure. follow through, gives you the power in the stroke. So with golf yeah. or baseball or boxing or what have you, follow through that swing into what it is you'd like to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now how do we use that to better our lives? Follow through on what you've decided to experience. And that's what people are doing already. You know, they've got some pain and, and uh, stiffness in their tissues. So they go and get a medical exam and they get the diagnosis if they're lucky right away. And then they identify with that as this is who I am. And then they follow through on that notion. So what we're asking people to do is say, 
look, that's not who you are. That's something that you're experiencing at this time. Who you are rises well beyond and above this condition. Mm -hmm. So follow through on that. Follow through on what a healthy person does, and you'll expect to receive the results that healthy people get. And it's so true for autoimmune disorders. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that my personal experience with AS really goes in alignment with what you're saying here regarding follow through and that I am stronger and bigger than what I was diagnosed with. When I was diagnosed, it was scary. I was terrified. I was totally terrified. At the same time inside, I felt that I didn't have to accept the prognosis. I could accept the diagnosis and that that's where I was, but I didn't have to accept the prognosis. And I followed through on that. I searched and searched and searched until I found people that were like, yes, you do not have to have that prognosis for the rest of your life. And that main person was you. And so for our audience out there listening, if they're here on this show, I believe that they have at least some of that feeling. They're like, hey, I don't have to accept this prognosis. That's why they're here. That's why they found us. So to follow through with that, that's the follow through I think that we're talking about. And it's like one thing yeah. you told me, put one foot in front of the other in the direction that, in the direction that feels best. So your job is to maintain focus on the state of health that you'd like to feel and then follow through by surrounding yourself with people who already have it. Listen mm -hmm. to people who've already gotten well and who've already recovered and come through remission and successfully left that issue in the past. That's the mm -hmm. follow through that we're talking about here as well. Surround yeah. yourself with people who've been where you are and prevailed instead of people who don't know what's possible for you and just say, well, you're probably going to die this way because we don't know any better. Yeah. You're going to carry this for life. There's nothing you can do because we don't know what else you can do about it. And then if you follow through on that command and that diagnosis and prognosis then the family gets involved and they start treating you like that person who's unwell and sick and crippled and you're following through in that direction and you get the results of what you're focused on. So what we ask people to do is focus on being the state of health. So for me, I'm not only healthy, I am health itself. I'm the health, wealth, and happiness in my life. The health, wealth, and happiness that I experience doesn't come from the world around me. It's what I am. I am the health of my life. I am the wealth of my company. What I know and what I produce is the wealth of what I get paid for. So the, where the money comes from isn't my wealth. I am the wealth. And I'm the joy and happiness of my life as well. I don't necessarily have to look to the outer world to feel happiness or have somebody in my life to bring me joy. I create those things myself. I am the joy. I am the happiness. I am the health and the wealth of my life. So I follow through with that accordingly. And that's what I experience more of in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody can do when they learn how. Instead, they're going, I am the sick one. I am the guy with AS or the girl with AS. I'm the one who's broken. There's something wrong with me and I need to follow through on treatments and medications and fighting the pain. And I'd be all for that if it worked, but no amount of fighting the pain with medications has ever cured anybody of ankylosing spondylitis. So I say, do something that works. And that's why I created my Habits That Heal and my Winslow methodologies called the Winslow Way for doing exactly that. Because it is possible People do it. I've done it. You've done it. Others have done it. Why not everybody mm -hmm. else as well? Yeah. You bring up a really good point in this lesson number 20, and it's surrounding yourself with people who already have achieved that success. And, and common psychology tells us that we take on a lot of the habits and behaviors of the people that we spend time with. We have mirror neurons in our brain that are designed to mirror and reflect the habits and behaviors of the people around us. It's, Isn't that cool? Like, study of it's, mirror neurons? Totally. I love it. One really good example I have of that is, is monkeys. Like monkeys will look to the alpha monkey before they freak out. If there's something going on, if they're in a tree and there's something maybe kind of scary beneath them and the alpha is cool and calm, those other monkeys will be at least more cool and more calm 
if the alpha is freaking out, they'll immediately instinctively, because of the mirror neurons, they will jump into a stress response. That's mirror neurons acting out in the wildlife scenario. And the same thing happens in the human form as well. Monkey see, monkey do, we used to call it. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, you have a little toddler on a playground and he's on the swing and he, and he falls off the swing and hits his head. First thing he does is look at mother. If mother freaks out and panics, oh my God, are you okay? And he starts <laughs> crying. Yeah. If the mother says, that's all right, you're cool. Just get up and go at it again. And they, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get up and smile and get back on the swing. That's a really good example. I mean, it's so important to surround ourselves with people who at least are working towards the same goal that we would like, or even better, people that have achieved it. And I think about these chat rooms I've seen online, and I was part of them for a long time, of, of tens of thousands of people who are doing their best to support each other that have a yes, and they don't understand the conscious and the subconscious mind and how those are interacting and how a subconscious is influencing the body. So they're actually contributing to and growing each other's victimization and problems and struggles more than they are elevating people out of the mindsets that got them sick to begin with. Do you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. I've seen it myself and the, the situation is that they don't know any better. So they're supporting each other in being ill, they're supporting the illness. Mm -hmm. And they call it coping with or living with AS or whatever they call it. And they believe that that's who they are and that's what they're dealing with and that there's no choice beyond this. And so they live their lives as martyrs or victims. To what end? They take it to their grave apparently and then hope for a salvation afterwards. Don't have to do that. The situation can be remedied if you know what to do and you understand the mind and the subconscious mind and stop supporting and following through on what makes you ill and start supporting and following through on surrounding yourself with people who are healthy and doing what they do. Mm -hmm. That's the choice. Yeah. Really quite yeah. basic. I know that in my search, my constant quest for answers to pain, I just remember having hope and I would think about all the cultures and all the smart people all over the world and I'd be like, how with so such a wide variety of information and knowledge in the world, how could no one have a positive answer for me with AS? And I just kept on searching till I found people with the answers that I wanted to hear. And to your point, I was able to, once I connected with the right people, stop trying to get it, right? Like how you end this lesson number 20, you stop trying to get it and you learn to become it. You learn to surround yourself with it. That's why me traveling to work one-on-one -on -one with you was the most life-changing experience I've ever had in my entire life, it was because I had the support and the person to let go of my constant search for answers and learn to become healthy. The constant search for answers that you were on and that everyone else who's on a similar path is experiencing is focusing on a problem. You're searching for a solution. How can you find a solution if there's no problem? So you're actually focused on what you lack, which is health and feeling good. And as I've said earlier on, feeling good is your job which reverses all those experiences and uh, expectations that you'll have in your life. If you can just feel good anyway, then you'll be able to weather the storms a lot more effectively and efficiently and move through it a lot more quickly. So yeah. that's what you were doing was looking for a solution based on there's something messed up about me. Yeah, yeah. So that's what people are supporting with each other. There's something messed up about you and I'll support you in that illness because there's nothing we can do because they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. So we forgive them for they know not what they do. And then we show them a better way. Focus on what it is you intend to experience. Yeah. One, one smart man I met on my health journey before I met you told me, and again, this is a very well-known man. And he said, 
Sky, follow your passion. And I had approached him at this retreat I was at, and I was so afraid. I had just been diagnosed with AS, and I, I wanted so badly to get on stage and start like communicating with, with these teachers about my issue. And I never did, but I went up to him after the, after the week-long conference, and I was like, hey, I, this is what I'm dealing with. And he said, Sky, follow your passion. And I didn't like it. I didn't like what he had to say. I, I was like, how is that going to do anything? I'm just in pain. And I can look back now and I can see where you were able to guide me in the direction of following my passion. The thing was, is what he couldn't help me do and see was make the internal shifts around language and thought patterns and the identity crisis I was in, the anxiety, the levels of sadness and guilt and shame and all of that he couldn't guide me out of that he didn't have the skill set to do it that's what you were able to do through your coaching and so yes like his answer was relatively correct like follow your passion but people still need the guidance people still like the support the coaching the structure the methodology around chronic pain and what to do with it was more to the point they need to know more about who they are this is what i helped you to do and internally shift your uh consciousness in a way that changed everything in life for you i didn't just talk about as mm -hmm. i didn't just talk about an affliction or a disease or a condition that you were trying to get rid of and that's what people are doing so when this fellow said follow your bliss he probably took that from uh, one of the great teachers of the 20th century named Joseph Campbell, who used to say, follow your bliss. So mm -hmm. he was focused on telling you to follow your passion, but he wasn't focused on you. He was saying, go get what you're passionate about or go follow along with that. Instead of being the passion, like I said, I am the health, I am the wealth, I am the happiness of my life. Mm -hmm. So I am the passion. Mm -hmm. And wherever I go and, and focus that passion brings results into my life. And the universe always shows up. You know, the world always puts the people and resources in my path that help me to accomplish what it is I'm passionate with. Because mm -hmm. people are excited for me and my vision. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And then they find it within themselves, like you did, to become who you are when you are what feels best. And now, look, you're helping other people in the world as a result. That's mm -hmm. following your passion. Mm -hmm. But it isn't just about your passion. It's about who you are and who you get to be when you learn these principles and follow them properly. Mm -hmm. Does that make and sense? It does. And again, back, it's, it's the methodology that was missing there. Like there's a, there's a system to change the way I was feeling about myself and disease and actually begin to tap into real passion that is a very healing force. I feel like, so I feel like if I would have run around in the world and just tried to follow my passion, maybe I would have healed in time, maybe another 10 years, 20 years. I was so in my head and so twisted around my relationship with AS and disease and inflammation and diets and, and work. And it was uh, the methodology that you supplied to me that allowed me to genuinely discover what I was capable of and follow my passion. The system, Winslow Way system, and you follow yeah. accordingly and you get results accordingly as well. Yeah. yeah. So that system is what allowed you to take the steps necessary to act like a healthy person acts, think like a healthy person thinks, speak like a healthy person speaks, and feel like a healthy person feels, and then see what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of trying to go get those things in the world around you, be the state, be these things first, and then watch what occurs as a result. So you yeah. did it, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Many others have as well. Mm. So we're not alone. Yeah. And I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. Totally. Yeah. I was, I was uh, just listening to our last episode and... I remember I was like, yeah, I'm not that special. And I recognize that I, I did the work, I'm smart. And again, I'll, I'll mirror what you just said. Like if I can do it, other people can do it too. 
and they are doing it all over the place. All around the world. Yeah. So Winslow's Habits That Heal Lesson number 20. The last sentence, you say, the secret of a happy life is this, stop trying to get it and just be it. That is a profoundly different level of thinking and psychology than I was living before. That right there has gifted me and my friends and my family and my clients a lot. So thank you for supplying me with that wisdom and the, the methodology and the guidance to get me to where I am now. My life is, is fun, it's healthy, and I get to share it with other people, which is my passion. So thank you for all of that. Oh, absolutely. I'm so blessed to be able to help you in any way that I have and upward and onward, my friend. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> all right, Peter. Well, on that note, I'll see you two weeks upward and onward from there. And I will, uh, I'll look forward to our next episode together. Me too, friend. See you then. <laughs> all right. See you, Peter. Okay. Welcome back. So to make good use of those mirror neurons, it's important to surround yourself with people who have already achieved the success that you desire. This is not a new phenomenon in the world of personal development, of business success, of mentoring, of basic understanding of psychology. What's new about it is a lot of people have not integrated it into their health practice. It is so important to do so. So if you have questions on that, I encourage you to reach out to me and ask. And focus on the follow through. Focus not just on the point of impact with that baseball, which in my mind is, is like, what pills do I take every day? And what diet do I do? And what can I do today based on my level of pain? That's the point of impact on your day-to-day -day basis, but like, where's that follow through taking you? And is your focus on a bigger scale, on a bigger perspective, actually gonna get you hitting that ball into the stadium seating and allowing you to achieve the life of AS freedom, which is so much what I would like for you. Quick disclaimer, Peter and I, we are well-educated in the mind-body connection, we are well practiced in a lot of areas of health and wellness, and we're not doctors. We are sharing our experience, our viewpoints, our education with years of study into these subjects and a lot of personal experience. It is possible to feel good again. That's just what I want you to know. And hopefully with this episode, you have a few more ideas of things to integrate into your life in order to make that happen. And I ask that you share this, share that on Facebook, share this on YouTube, share this with family and friends and someone that you know in pain. We're all in this world and in this life together. And the more we can share positivity and education, the better we can all do to reduce our pain and to move forward living a great life. To contact me, skydenton.com is your place. Send me questions, send me inquiries. I would love to hear from you. And again, you can reach Peter at asvictors.com and he's more than happy to hear from you. That's it, everyone. Thank you. And thank everyone for supporting the last 14 episodes, making this one the 15th. And we're all having a lot of fun with it. Its reach is becoming more and more broad and it's growing. And I do appreciate your help with all of that. So my friends, until next time, I wish you the best. Enjoy your day. Get outside, move your body. Enjoy your friends and your family and focus on the follow through. And is your to-do list, is that point of impact gonna get you to hitting that home run into the Grand Stand Stadium? My name is Guy Denton. I will see you all very soon. <laughs>